Pentagon awards contract to United Airlines to forcibly remove Assad. Washington, the Pentagon announced Tuesday it had awarded a sole source contract to United Airlines for work related to the forcible removal of President Bashar al-Assad from Syria. The contract, worth $2.1 billion, tasks the airline company with locating Assad, grabbing him from his seat in the presidential palace, and dragging him out of Damascus by his arms. The contract also notes that Assad should be asked several times, politely to give up his seat of power, though if he refuses, United Workers should bloody his nose up a bit, according to the posting at Fed Bizops. The award comes just days after President Donald Trump authorized the launch of cruise missiles at a Syrian airbase, in response to Assad's use of chemical weapons. Two Navy ships launched 59 Tomahawk missiles into Syria, which destroyed roughly 20% of its operational aircraft and a green beans coffee shop being used by the Russian army. Soon after the strikes, some in the Trump White House began calling for regime change in Syria. Nikki Haley, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, told reporters that peace in Syria could not be achieved with Assad remaining in power. Though U.S. military officials have struggled in recent months with a plan for removing Assad, United Airlines cleared its final hurdle for the military's request for proposal on Monday, when it ordered police officers to forcibly remove a passenger from a flight that was overbooked. Monday's test run was more successful than we could have hoped, said Charlie Hobart, a spokesman for United. United will be sending one of its aircraft to Damascus sometime next week, where it will land and carry out the plan called for in the contract. It's not yet clear whether United employees will actually carry out the forcible removal of Assad. One source said it's possible the company may subcontract that portion of the work requirement to the Chicago Police Department, Wells Fargo, or Comcast. In a related story, Syria issues travel ban on U.S. missiles. Damascus, Syria, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad ordered the immediate closure of all Syrian airports and airfields to U.S. missiles today fulfilling a threat he issued after U.S. missile strikes on the country. In a ceremony at the presidential palace attended by most of the Syrian government, Assad signed the ban to rapturous applause, only briefly punctuated when several generals prematurely stopped clapping and were summarily executed. We don't want these missiles here, Assad told the cheering crowd. We don't need these missiles here. We are perfectly capable of destroying our own infrastructure without these foreign missiles coming over here to do a job that Syrians are perfectly capable of doing themselves. To illustrate his point, he ordered his Shabiha militia to immediately massacre all remaining Syrian soldiers at the Shayrat Air Base. Assad added that he planned to extend the missile ban to the United Kingdom, France, Israel, and most of Western Europe. We only want to admit missiles into our country that will help our people, like those launched from Russia, Iran, and hopefully China, Assad told reporters. Assad's decision was immediately condemned by a number of human rights groups. This impacts the most vulnerable group in America today, the Navy's surface fleet, said Neil O'Connor, a spokesman for Amnesty International. All these poor sailors want to do is feel like they're actually part of the war and tell their sweethearts how much danger they're in before going back to the galley for Mithrats. The Syrian Civil Liberties Union vowed to oppose what it called a racist ban, and lawyers for the group were traveling to military bases, airports, surface-to-air missile sites, and bunkers on Monday. Interestingly, the Assad regime did not attempt to thwart their travel in any way, and in some instances, bust them to military facilities for their scheduled protests.